Far beyond the familiar world we know lies a frontier of extremes, where the force of water and ice craft the scenery. Every wave, every ripple tells a tale to the depth and its own story. From the silence of snowfields to the thunder of glaciers collapsing, this land carves a story of immense beauty. As we embark to the end of the earth, our ship feels like a bridge between worlds. We cross the Drake Passage, one of the most dangerous oceans on earth, and navigate through waves as big as buildings, and nothing but giant seabirds following us. Thinking of this journey ahead, it evokes images of the early polar explorers, survival and the old race for claiming land. A vision of Antarctica. Where the ocean kisses the edges of a frozen continent, a realm of blue and white emerges, a vast landscape of ice and mountains, white as far as the eyes can see. Mountains in stark contrast against the ice, and drifting icebergs sculpted by wind and wave. Uninhabitable to humans, a last great wilderness. This harsh landscape seems like a threat to life, but it's actually full of life not many humans. Here, wildlife reigns supreme. From the glacial heights and penguins, the gentle guardians, to the soaring spirits of the southern ocean, seabirds, to below the surface, where a universe of whales and microscopic rilla whales, life flourishes. Through my camera, I capture images of this icy realm, each frame becoming one day a testament to Earth's fleeting wonders. In the details, a hidden world, the artistry of ice, the delicate balance of life. The first step ashore feels like a dance with history, following the paths of explorers of old, Behind the tales of this adventure lies a dark story of Antarctica. Apart from true explorers like Shackleton, many only came to claim and conquer the continent, exploiting nature and wildlife, driving it to the blink of extinction in a rush of unlimited power. After decades of hunting whales and seals, there were literally hardly any left in the Southern Ocean. With its remote location and the harsh and brutal climate, one day it became unprofitable and the stations were given up again. Now, the rusted metal skeletons are a reminder to that past and are by now taken over by the animals again. Today, an international ensemble protects the continent, the animals and the surrounding waters. But with rapidly increasing climate warming, this may change. All our actions impact this delicate ecosystem. And what was once ice may become water soon. Well, hello everyone. Thanks for watching our recent film from our expedition down to Antarctica. As some of you might know, I've been shooting on Canon for quite a while now, probably around 12 years by now. So naturally I was very excited when they reached out to ask if I can shoot a short film on their Canon EOS R5C. Today I just want to talk a little bit about this camera, the trip, and what made it the perfect camera for this project. So first some context for the route. We started in Uruguay, Montevideo, and sailed all the way down to South Georgia to spend some days down there. And then we continued to the Antarctic Peninsula and ended back in Ushuaia, Argentina. In total, it was about 18 days and we spent a lot of days on rough seas. It was partly so bad that the whole ship got shaking around and it was quite a challenge to film, but I loved it. Once we arrived in South Georgia, it's this beautiful lush island in the middle of literally nowhere and it has 
super high mountains that are just rising out of the ocean, topped with glaciers, and you can see all the crevasses and so on. But the best thing is that the beaches and the coast is like full of wildlife, penguins, seals, and it felt so surreal to go and land there. And it was probably my favorite moment of the whole trip. Just landing there, standing in between thousands of penguins, hearing them chatter, smelling them, and just be able to document it. And another interesting thing was that South Georgia used to be like a hotspot for whaling. So we saw all the remnants of that old days, the skeletons of the production halls and the machinery. It was quite intimidating, but also really interesting to document. And after South Georgia, we continued down to Antarctica. On the way, we passed this massive iceberg, which was about 16 kilometers in length, I believe. And it just felt like out of this world, looking at this white wall of ice just in the middle of the ocean. Once we arrived to Antarctica, we just saw this massive continent of ice just popping out of nowhere. It was literally glaciers going straight into the ocean and you could see just a little bit of stones beneath it. Basically the whole continent is covered in ice. I mean, I knew that, but it looked pretty surreal to see that in person. So why was the Canon R5C the perfect match for me on this trip? I'm neither a pure filmmaker nor a pure photographer. I like to be in both worlds and the R5C gives me just that flexibility that I need to have the best quality in these both worlds. It's a very capable stills camera but also it's an excellent cinema camera and you can switch literally between seconds between those two worlds. That allows me to keep my kit small and utilize all the lenses that I already own and for me having a small kit is probably one of the most important things on my journey because most places don't allow me to bring a lot of gear, a lot of luggage and especially two camera bodies. So the R5C, been shooting on it for the last year and I got used to the cinema menu and since then it opens up another world for filmmaking. The whole project was shot in 25 frames per second, XF AVC codec and C-Log tree. And I configured the camera that I can swap into slow and fast motion with just one click. And then I either shot at 50 frames or at 100 frames per second. And that's also one benefit of the R5C that I can configure every single button. Regarding lenses, we brought everything from 24 millimeters up to 500 millimeters combined with a 1.4 teleconverter. Usually I found myself using the 2405 the most because it gave me the most flexibility in this landscape with the animals shooting up close, but also shooting the landscape, the white scenes. If I wanted to get closer, I was using the 7200 2.8 or the 10500. The teleconverter I only used for getting really close, shooting details in the landscape or even in the animals. We also brought a couple of variable ND filters and polarizing filters which were just useful in this environment. In most cases I use the R5C like it is here, just with a cage to have some more grip. But I also brought like an external monitor and V-mount batteries to rig it up and to get some additional weight, which really helped me shooting stable wildlife footage, especially on the long end. But sometimes the situation required to pack down small, like on a Zodiac or in the bridge of the ship, or just in situations where a big rig would have limited me. And so I really enjoy using this camera stripped down, but also built up on a cinema rig. And that's also one benefit of the R5C that you can have this small capable package, but you can also extend it to your wish and your needs. In the end, I need a camera that I can trust to deliver great quality in all different scenarios, in all weather conditions, in every environment. And the R5C just does that. And I can trust it in every scenario. So I hope you enjoyed this little talk. And if you have any questions, let me know down in the comments or just send me a private message. And as always, see you soon.